Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum. We have 1 over 3 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 35 plus so on and so forth all the way to infinitely many terms and we're going to try to evaluate this sum. So first of all, notice that the denominators are odd numbers, but not only that, they are actually product of consecutive odd numbers, such as 3 can be written as 1 times 3, 15 can be written as 3 times 5, and 35 is 5 times 7. Of course, the next term is going to be 7 times 9, and then 9 times 11, so on and so forth. So that's the pattern we're looking at, and we want to evaluate this infinite sum. When we are dealing with an infinite sum, the first thing we should check is if it's geometric. And when you look at a problem like this, you could probably clearly say right away, hopefully, or really quickly, that this is not geometric. Because why is it not geometric? You can easily check. The first term is multiplied by one fifth to get the next one. But then when you multiply the second term by one fifth, which is the same ratio which is supposed to exist, it doesn't work because we get 1 over 75. So this is not geometric. That's what I wanted, one of the things that I wanted to point out. So we have to do it differently. How can you add something like this if there are infinitely many terms? One of the techniques that you can use is called partial fractions. Let's go ahead and express this in general, where n is an integer. I can write one of these terms in general as 1 over 2n minus 1 multiplied by 2n plus 1. Now, why is it 2n minus 1 and 2n plus 1? because 2n minus 1 and 2n plus 1 represent consecutive odd numbers. And if you replace n with 1, you get 1 times 3 at the bottom, and then n equals 2 gives you this, n equals 3, so on and so forth. So this is consistent with our sum. The question is, how do you find this using this general term? So here's what we're going to work on. We're going to go ahead and split this into two fractions. So, and that's called partial fractions because we kind of divide it into two parts or more parts depending on the situation. But here, the denominators are 2n minus 1 and 2n plus 1. So, one of the things that you need to pay attention to is the factors are linear. So, the numerators are going to be one degree less, which is constant. So, when you have a linear factor, you're going to have a constant in the numerator. And then, of course, another constant for 2n plus 1. Notice that this can be written as the sum of two fractions with different denominators. And then when you make a common denominator, our original expression is formed. Make sense? So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's make a common denominator, turn it, in, turn it into something like this, and then compare the coefficients and find a and b. That's going to be our goal. So in order to be able to do that, by the way, once you make a common denominator, the denominators are not going to be that important, so you can totally ignore them and write this as follows. Multiply A by this and B by that. So crisscross, applesauce, and you're going to get this. And that's going to equal 1, which is nice. So there's two ways to go about it. There's two schools of thought on this. One of them says you can just distribute and arrange the terms so that you can set the two polynomials equal to each other. Wait a minute, is one a polynomial? Yes, it is a constant. So the right-hand side must also be a constant polynomial in terms of n. So it means that it's not going to contain n. Second school of thought says you can just plug in any value for n since this is true for any n value as long as n is an integer, then you'll get a system of equations to solve it. I'm going to go with the first method and distribute 2an to a n plus a plus 2b n 2b or not to be and it's been a while right and now we can go ahead and write this as 2a plus 2b as the coefficient of n and then constant term will be a minus b now notice that on the right hand side we have n but we shouldn't because there's no n on the left which means the coefficient of n should be zero it needs to vanish which means disappear so, and this equals one Makes sense? It's, again, a system. Even if you plugged in some values like n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 1 half, whatever, you will still get a system of equations. So, no big deal. Now, the 
first one gives me a plus b is 0 by division by 0. That gives me b is negative a. And if you plug it in here, a minus b equals a plus a, because b is negative a, equals 1. From here, we get 2a equals 1 and a equals 1 half. So a is 1 half, and since b is the opposite, b becomes negative 1 half. So those are the coefficients I'm looking for. Now I can go ahead and split my expression into a sum. Let's do it. 1 over 1 over 2n minus 1 multiply by 2n plus 1 equals a over, remember that, that's 1 half over 2n minus 1 plus, I'm going to put a plus sign, but actually that turns into a minus sign because b is negative, and I'll put a plus here, and... It gives you the second fraction. So when you try to add or subtract these two fractions by making a common denominator, it gives you this one. Make sense? So you can go back and forth. But there's no need to go back because this is what we wanted. Now, since there is one half in the numerator and it kind of looks awkward, let's go ahead and put it in the front and write this as one half on the outside and one over two n minus one minus one over two n plus one. And at this point, you can actually go ahead and use the sigma notation because what happens is this is a general term, but n is going to go from 1 to infinity. So you can kind of write it like this. Our sum, which was 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 plus 1 over 5 times 7, so on and so forth, all the way to infinity and beyond, like Buzz Lightyear, right? We can basically write this as sigma n equals 1 to infinity of 1 half times 1 over 2n minus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 1. Because basically the idea is to add up all these terms for n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, dot, 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 all the way to infinity. Make sense? And then we're going to evaluate this. But how do you do it? First of all, 1 half you can take out. That's a nice property of sigma. And you don't have to use sigma, by the way. You can just write it this way, too. Take the 1 half out if you want. Replace n with 1. You're going to get 1 over 1 minus 1 over 3. That's the first term. And let's put a little bracket here. Plus, for n equals 2, this is for n equals 1. For n equals 2, you're going to get 1 over 3 minus 1 over 5. And then for n equals 3, 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7. The first three terms are obtained this way. But, of course, they will continue the same pattern goes on forever. So sigma notation is kind of more accurate because it tells you that this is from n equals 1 through infinity. What do you do with this sum? Simplify. And it simplifies a great deal. Look at this. Negative 1 third and positive 1 third. Opposites, 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 all the way up to infinity, right? Everything cancels out except for 1 over 1, which is 1. And these are all going to be zeros, right? So 1 half times 1 is 1 half. So that's our sum, right? What did we start with? 1 over 3 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 35 and so on and so forth. If you're not convinced, go ahead and plug it into Wolfram Alpha. I didn't. I don't know why. Actually, I did, and I got this result, I think. I didn't even know that Wolfram Alpha could handle dot, 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 but it can. So thank you, Wolfram Alpha. You're pretty smart. Anyway, so the answer is 1 half, this infinite sum. How do we know that the sum converges? Because it's telescopic and everything cancels out. And if you write the term out, like way out, if you go way out and take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity, you're going to get zero. So after a while, the terms are going to be super duper small. And even though they're going to cancel, they're going to be way too small and get smaller and smaller. So they're not going to have any effect. And we're going to get a sum. That's equivalent to one half. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.